makers of Clippercraft clothes for men, and 1,203 leading retail stores from coast to coast, present Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's immortal character, the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes, starring John Stanley. This week's adventure, The Case of the Unwelcome Ambassador. Really, my dear Watson, you're being most discourteous. We have a guest waiting outside. Fetch him. But who? Go on, open the door, bring him in. There's hardly any reason for such haste. He can well afford to wait. It happens that our guest is a corpse. And so once again we visit Dr. John Watson, who is at work on his memoirs. Ah, Mr. Harris. Well, well. Come in, sir. Come in. Thank you. How's your writing coming along, Dr. Watson? Oh, splendidly, splendidly. Sit down, my boy. Thank you very much. Uh, Which of the famous Sherlock Holmes cases are you working on now? Well, it's the case of the unwelcome ambassador. A very colorful affair involving a most undiplomatic murder. Mm, I'm very anxious to hear about it, Dr. Watson. (laughs) And so you shall, so you shall. But uh, I am very anxious to hear from you first, Mr. Harris. The fall weather is upon us, and you must make some suggestions for my fall wardrobe. Why, certainly. Many millions of America's best-dressed men have discovered Clippercraft, acknowledged to be the finest clothing value in America. Here's why. By a voluntary concentration of their enormous buying power, 1,203 of this country's finest independent stores from coast to coast provide Clippercraft's great tailoring plants with the advantages of steady year-round operation and pass along to you the savings that result from lowered manufacturing and distribution costs. That's why you're certain of getting more for your money in distinctive styling and skillful tailoring in fabrics of lasting good looks. You'll find an outstanding selection of smart new fall clothes by Clippercraft at the leading store in your community, at the store you can trust. Really expensive-looking Clippercraft suits at only $47.50, with some styles at only $40. Also, Clippercraft sport jackets at only $26.50, and Clippercraft top coats at only $40 and $45. Some with removable zip in linings at only $47.50 and $52.50. Yes, compare Clippercraft with clothes selling for many dollars more. <laughs> And now, Dr. Watson, who was the unwelcome ambassador? This story, Mr. Harris, goes back to the days before my marriage, when Holmes and I shared 221B Baker Street together. We were returning from a Sarasata recital at St. James Hall. We were approaching our lodging in a hansom. It was rather late in the evening. This is 221B, driver. Driver, I say this is 221B. Holmes, he's passing it. He isn't stopping. Obviously. But but, but how can you just, just sit there and do nothing whatsoever? Driver, head up there. Driver, stop at once. At once, I say. Sorry, Governor. Either he's kidnapping us or he's insane. Both fascinating prospects, Watson, so you suppose you regain your composure. Well, I hope you don't mind, Governor. I was told to... Uh, let me see now. Uh, wait, I to give you this. Uh, what the devil? Now, careful, Governor. Taint a salt biscuit that's wrapped in that oil skin. Open her up, why don't you? All right, let me see. It... Great Scott. It's... it's a precious stone, a ruby. Yes, fabulously valuable, my dear Watson. I should say from casual examination that it's the very rarest type. A pigeon's blood ruby, found only in the Mogok stone tract of Upper Burma. Of course, to be certain, one would require instruments. Who gave this to you, driver? Oh, please, Governor, you'll only confuse me. Now, let me see now. I'm to say the ruby's for you, Mr. Holmes. It's by way of an invitation to stay in me camp and allow me to drive you to the docks, where you're to board the good ship Java Bell. Indeed. Well, I'd have none of it. Oh, if you'll allow me to finish, Governor. I'm to say your safety aboard the Java Bell is guaranteed. You're just invited for a bit of a chat. Oh. And uh, who extends this curious invitation? That, Governor, I'm not to say. It's a trap, Holmes. I'm for commanding an about face. Not at all. Either our host is a gentleman of fantastic means whose plight is so desperate that he's been obliged to employ the ruby to attract us to his ship, or else 
He's a remarkably successful criminal, and the ruby is a mere trinket in his bag of loot. I anticipate making his acquaintance with relish. Faster, driver. We'll play your master's game. Gentlemen, he's in the cabin. What's all lit up on the main deck? You see it? Thank you, driver. Shall we go aboard, Watson? I say, it's a sinister-looking vessel, don't you think? There's all the aspects of a pirate ship. Mm. This would be our host's cabin. Come. Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson, you've accepted my invitation. I'm delighted. Be seated, won't you? Thank you. Huh? Uh, what's that? I said thank you. Now, sir, beyond the fact that you've spent considerable time in the tropics, that you've been in London for six days, and that you're an exporter of spices, what information do you wish to impart? How on earth do you know all that? The shipping page of the Globe listed the Java Bell as arriving six days ago, if I recall correctly, out of Macau, the Portuguese East Indies. As for your cargo, the odor of cinnamon aboard is inescapable. And it's clear that you've been in the tropics for some time because you suffer from a slight defect in your hearing, symptomatic of prolonged use of quinine. You're quite right, Mr. Holmes. I do come from Macau. It is on the South China Sea, separated from China proper by an ancient wall. There you may see Maharajas of India and jeweled countesses of France mingling in its twisted streets with riffraff and scum from a hundred ports. It is the most lawless city on earth. It's a legend. I imagine your problem concerns Macau? It does, sir. My problem concerns the newly arrived ambassador to England from Macau, Senor Rui. Well, uh, what of him, Mr... Uh... Mr. Edwards, Watson. The Globe was also conscientious enough to list the owner of the Java Bell. Mr. Holmes, the ambassador is about to be murdered. What? Oh, how do you know? There is a delicate political situation in Macau, Dr. Watson. Fanatic extremists would benefit greatly if the ambassador were to die. I have heard rumors that they have dispatched emissaries here to London to carry out the unpleasant task. And you've sent for me to prevent the crime? Exactly. If the ambassador should die, there would be an upheaval in the Indies. I should lose control of my export business. An immeasurable loss. You may consider that ruby a gesture on my part, Holmes. Keep it with my compliments. And besides, you may name your own fee. I have but one proviso. And pray continue. Our understanding must be absolutely confidential. That's why I had you brought here. I did not want to be seen entering your flat. It would add to the unfortunate rumors already circulating in London about the ambassador. Are you personally acquainted with him? Oh, we've met social occasions, tea in Hong Kong, military ball in Ceylon, that sort of thing. What is his address? To Lancaster Gate. Uh, does the ambassador know of the threat to his life? Certainly, but he refuses a bodyguard. A deeply ingrained sense of oriental fatalism. When did you last see him? Oh, it's been months. Three at least. Uh, I take it you'll accept the case, Holmes? Definitely. Then, if and when you discover the would-be killer, please turn him over to Scotland Yard before revealing his identity to me. By Jove, that's a strange request. Dr. Watson, I feel the man who would deprive me of my industrial empire should suffer. But I want him to suffer legally. If he were to fall into my hands personally, I... Well, I, I am a collector of strange oriental objects. Some of them include torture devices beyond Western man's imagination. I could not resist using them. Now, my dear Watson, I shall have a pipe and consider... Oh, dear. Visitors at this hour? Welcome, visitors, Watson. If they arrive at this late hour, it must be on an intriguing mission. Or oh, remind me to enter Mr. Edwards in my index. Edwards. I don't care for that man, Holmes. 
The ship bespeaks the man, you know, and the Java Bell is a saucy, wicked lady of the sea. Come in. Mr. Holmes. Let me tell him, Philip. Mr. Easy, Holmes. my dear girl, easy. Suppose we begin with a proper introduction. Yes, but we're desperate. We can't wait. This I... is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. How do you do? Mr. Holmes, My dear not... young lady, if you'll remove your cape, the mud on it's dripping to the floor, and Mrs. Hudson, our housekeeper, will be furious in the morning. We mustn't lose a second. Your please. coats are in the same deplorable condition as the young lady's. Oh, very well. I'm Philip Randall. This is Edith Norton. I'm secretary to Ambassador Ruiz from Macau. Uh huh. Edith and I were out for the evening. Where? The theatre. Then we decided to walk to her place through Regent's Park. We were by the lake. And we saw a body floating in the lake. It was horrible. I recognized the face of the corpse. It was the ambassador. I refused to send for the police. Philip's afraid the ambassador's death will create international complications. He didn't think we could persuade Scotland Yard to keep the awful news a secret. The body was floating close to the edge of the lake. I could reach it. We pulled it on shore. We hailed a cab. Philip bribed the cabbie to keep his mouth shut. We managed to place the dead body in the hansom. Uh, where is the corpse now? Propped up in the cab, right outside this door. Good heavens. How very crude. Uh, fetch him inside. It's rather chilly tonight, and we have a nice warm fire here. Watson, give young Randall a hand. Bring the late ambassador in here where I may have a look at him. Come along, Randall. We too can manage. But hurry, you can't just leave him there. I must apologize for my disheveled appearance, Mr. Holmes. May I remove my hat and straighten my hair? Certainly. Did you know the late ambassador, Miss Norton? Yes, I... I'd been out with him a few times. Was he fond of you? Yes. Terribly? Mm, very. Propose? Oh, no. Oh, you have a piece of confetti in your hair. Here. That's it. And a speck of mud on your neck. That's better. How did you regard the ambassador... Why, I... I adored one. He was a darling. Does young Randall stand a profit by his employer's death? Well, I... I don't want to place Philip in a difficult position, but... but there was talk that the ambassador was somehow preventing Philip from receiving a, a vital diplomatic post. Mm. According to the social columns, Miss Norton, which I read solely to remain au courant, and with extreme distaste, the late ambassador was not your soul... Darling. So resent that, Mr. Holmes. If a girl cannot be popular without having Hello. people... Here's the body. Easy, Randall. Yes, sir. Place yes. the ambassador in my armchair. It's most comfortable. Ah, that's it. Handsome. Wasn't he? Uh, really, Holmes, your macabre sense of yes. humor is... Bullet wound in his back. He was shot, then pushed into the lake. Watson, the bullet wound of entrance is at the sixth left intercostal space. Path of the bullet, oblique, downward. Mr. Holmes, what should we do? Since it's extremely late, Miss Norton, if I were you and I'd ask my escort to see me home. But the, the body, we, we... Our lodging is not what I would term extravagantly commodious. But I believe we can accommodate the cadaver as a guest, temporarily. Shall we come tomorrow? How will we know what... You we... must be exhausted, Miss Norton. Good night. Good night, Mr. Randall. Mr. Holmes, Arthur, if you don't, let us know Good what... night, well, I must say you might have handled the two youngsters with less effrontery, Holmes. We haven't time for the amenities. Uh, Randall, I... I beg your pardon, I... Did you forget something? No. Edith's gone downstairs. I just stole back because I... Well, I have a suggestion. It's about a man named Jack Singh. And why are you telling us about him? Well, he knew the ambassador quite well. He's an incredible chap, a mixture of Chinese, Malay, British. He spent a good deal of time in Macau at the gambling tables. Where is this Singh? In Limehouse. He operates a gambling spot there. There was talk of a wager he'd made on the mathematical chances of the ambassadors being assassinated. You, you might look into it, Mr. Holmes. Well, I must run. Good night. Hmm. Now, why would young Randall want to keep Miss Norton from hearing that? You're wasting time in idle speculation, Watson. Well, perhaps. Holmes, why are you putting on your coat? Because we're off to Limehouse, Watson. I must meet this gentleman who equates mathematics with death. Well, Dr. Watson, Jack Singh sounds like a very intriguing suspect. There should be a wealth of clues in visiting him in Limehouse. <laughs> should there, Mr. Harris? Well, I may be wrong about that. 
Of course, I'm always right about another subject, though, Doctor. Ah, and from that sparkle in your eye, Mr. Harris, I deduce that you're about to discuss your favorite subject. And a favorite of mine, too. Clippercraft clothes. That's right, Dr. Watson. There's no mystery about this country's most sensational clothing value. You see, there's a great big American idea behind Clippercraft. The famous Clippercraft plan. Now, this plan gives you the benefit of group purchasing because it concentrates the vast buying power of 1,203 of this country's leading stores from coast to coast. It gives you the opportunity of purchasing truly fine Clippercraft clothes at your local independent store in which you enjoy really friendly, courteous service. You know how much that means when you're buying clothes. And Clippercraft clothes are correctly cut and tailored of superb long-wearing materials. And the savings. Fine Clippercraft suits cost only $47.50 with selections at $40, too. Clippercraft top coats cost only $40 and $45. Featured are several models with removable zip-in linings at only $47.50 and $52.50. And Clippercraft sport jackets are only $26.50. That's why men who know insist on Clippercraft clothes. So be sure to visit the Clippercraft store in your city. These leading stores in the metropolitan area are proud to add their names to Clippercraft in your suits, top coats, and sport jackets. In Manhattan, Saks 34th, Broadway at 34th. John Wanamaker Men's Stores, Broadway at 8th and 67 Liberty Street. In Brooklyn, Abraham and Strauss. In Newark, New Jersey, Boulevard Men's Shop, Kresge, Newark. And in Jamaica, the B&B Clothes Shop, 16408 Jamaica Avenue. And now, shall we return to our story, Mr. Harris? Oh, by all means, Dr. Watson. Very well, then. Holmes and I dashed into a hansom and soon reached Limehouse. The streets were too crowded for a horse and carriage, so we were obliged to go the last portion of the way to Jack Singh's gambling establishment on foot. I say, Holmes, what sort of celebration is this? Limehouse is celebrating the Chinese New Year, Watson. This confetti gets all over one's clothes. The blasted noise is deafening. We shall escape it in a moment. Ah, there's the building that houses Jack Singh's gambling establishment. Yes, so it is. And Lord knows what will become of us in there. It's probably swarming with criminals. And murderers. I regret the necessity of disturbing your game, Mr. Singh. Not at all, Mr. Holmes. I am delighted that you have brought the news of the ambassador's death. It is magnificent news. Well, I must confess, Mr. Singh, you have a curious attitude. Not even a, a trace of regret. Dr. Watson, my interest in the ambassador was purely professional. What was the nature of the wager you made regarding his death? I heard rumors that fanatics were planning to kill him. So I took a chance. I have wagered on the turn of a card. Why should I not wager on a twist of fate? I visited Lloyd's. Oh, yes, and you purchased assassination insurance, I venture to say. Exactly. What on earth is assassination insurance? The policy of Lloyd's, my dear Watson. The original policy was issued on the life of Napoleon Bonaparte. Lloyd's underwrites the sudden death of any illustrious personage as a protection to businessmen who might suffer substantial losses. I pay the premium on the life of the ambassador. Now he is dead. I have won another wager. I have again guessed the correct number on the wheel. <laughs> From your highly pleased demeanor, Mr. Singh, I should say you've won a gigantic sum. I have. I am quite frank about it. Mr. Singh, when did you last see the ambassador? Ten days ago. Thank you. I have no further questions. Good night, gentlemen. You may use that side door going out. Good evening, Goodbye, Mr. Mr. Singh. Singh. Where to now, Holmes? To the ambassador's residence. But young Randall said the place is deserted. There won't be a soul there. Precisely why we shall pay to visit, Watson.
Randall told you no one's at home here at the Ambassador's home. Then we're obliged to enter the Ambassador's home in unorthodox fashion, Watson. <laughs> and how might that be? The window. These absurd English window fasteners won't delay us. This way. Shall we try this window? Hmm, superb. Opens in a jiffy. Up she goes. After me, Watson. Leap over the sill. So. I don't. There we are. I wish to see the ambassador's study first. This way. Dip go, Watson, dip go. Sorry. This is the study. Here is the ambassador's desk. His papers. Like that small lamp, Watson's. Wait a minute, Holmes. Shh. I hear someone. Uh huh. The late diplomat has another visitor at the front door. Who could it be? Step behind this clothes horse with me. Good. I can see the front door. Someone stepped in. Tall, thin chap. He's lighting a can. Wait a minute. He's holding the candle toward his face. Why, it's young Randall. Why, Watson? I have already examined those papers, Randall. You'll find them rather dull. Holmes, shall I send for the police, Holmes? No, no. Don't do that. Please. Really, I, I haven't done a thing. I just came back to... to... You were the ambassador's secretary. Therefore, you made use of your pass key to return and have a look at his private papers. Papers he undoubtedly never allowed you to see. Yes, I, I was hoping to find out who killed him on my Confounded own. Confound it, man. It appears to me as though you killed him. But I didn't, I tell you. Why don't you ask Edwards who killed him? Oh, no. You can't avoid suspicion by accusing someone else, But I've told you all I know. Edith Norton and I found the body in Regent's Park Lake. I had not seen the ambassador for a week. He had taken a week to relax. Edith told me that she had not seen him in a few days herself. A few days? Yes. Are you quite certain Miss Norton stated she had not seen the ambassador for a few days? Quite. Two days, she said. Watson, have you your army revolver? Yes. You'll have need of it. Oh, where are we off to now? Back to Limehouse. The pieces of the puzzle fit together neatly. But we must hurry. If we're too late, Jack Singh will have killed Edith Norton. <laughs> I'd hoped by now the Chinese would have finished celebrating their new year. Do you think we'll get through this crowd in time, Holmes? We must, Watson. That poor girl will be dead and we should be to blame. This corner. It's not far now. Got a barber ready? Yes, ready, Holmes. I'd, I'd keep up with you, but the old wound, you know, my, my leg. This is the side entrance. Someone is purposely not answering. Knock again, Holmes. Open! Open, I say! Open or we shall shoot the lock off! Holmes! Yes, Mr. Singh? Good evening, Miss Norton. Oh, Mr. Holmes, I, I'm Mr. so Singh, glad to I'm see obliged you. to detain you with this revolver until we fetch the police to charge you with the murder of the ambassador. Oh, not quite, Watson. Actually, the ambassador was killed... By you, Miss Norton. Why, well, that's Quiet, preposterous. Go on, Holmes. When you first arrived at Baker Street, Miss Norton, there was almost imperceptible bit of confetti in your hair. What of it? Exactly. The question occurred to me, of course. I had the answer when I first visited Limehouse tonight. The Chinese have filled the air with confetti. You remarked about it, Watson. Therefore, I knew Miss Norton must have been in Limehouse earlier this evening, before her engagement with young Randall, since he said they'd only attended the theatre. And so you knew, Holmes, that she was in this with Mr. Singh. That doesn't prove that I killed the ambassador. Patience, dear girl. Everyone who could have done away with the ambassador said they hadn't seen him in at least a week. In one case, not for three months. But you claim to have seen him just two days ago, Miss Norton. I, I did. That's not the truth. It's utterly impossible for you to have seen the ambassador alive in the past 48 hours. I believe Dr. Watson will support the authenticity of my medical information in this instance... The ambassador's body was found floating in Regent's Park Lake. 
and it requires a minimum of five days in the water for a human body to become sufficiently buoyant to float. <laughs> you have a home. We will collect a great deal from Lloyd's, Mr. Holmes. If you would forget this, you might... Ah, wait. yes. And you, Mr. Singh. You purchased a weighty premium guaranteeing the ambassador's life. But you wanted to wager to be a certainty. You could not commit the crime yourself. You required the services of someone familiar with the ambassador's habits here in London. Someone who knew him intimately, who would be with him alone and often. So you made arrangements with Miss Norton, a ruthlessly ambitious young lady, who's striven desperately to marry into wealth. Why, of all the nuts? I hurried here because I realized that now that the money is forthcoming, Mr. Singh might decide to do away with you, dear girl. Why should he share it now the work is done? Keep your hand out of that drawer, Mr. Singh. Don't reach for your gun. Jack! Oh. Jack! Oh. Worthy marksmanship, Watson. Merely a shoulder wound, Mr. Singh. Try not to look as though you'd been mortally wounded. You too, Miss Norton, that expression of despair is most unbecoming. I suggest you save your melodramatic performances. Scotland Yard will provide the perfect stage for them soon enough. With a well-constructed gallows. Oh, I, I did forget. A happy new year, Mr. Singh. A happy new year, Miss Norton. Well, Dr. Watson, the case of the unwelcome ambassador was very intriguing. Now, may we have advance information about next week's adventure? Mr. Harris, I've called it the Black Guardsman of Braddock Castle. <laughs> I can see him now, standing on the north tower of a castle, black against the red sun, an axe on his shoulder, looking down and laughing at his work. For, for what work? Murder, Mr. Harris. Murder. Well... We shall certainly be knocking at the door of your study next week, Dr. Watson, to see the black guardsman at work. The makers of Clipper Craft Clothes and 1,203 leading stores from coast to coast have brought you another in the new series of broadcasts featuring the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. Our stories are based upon the character Sherlock Holmes, created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and the program is produced and directed by Basil Lockrin. Sherlock Holmes is played by John Stanley, Dr. Watson by Ian Martin. This week's story was written by Howard Merrill, special music by Albert Berman. If you don't know your Clippercraft dealer, write Clippercraft, 200 Fifth Avenue, New York City. Be sure to listen next week to Sherlock Holmes in The Black Guardsman of Braddock Castle. <laughs> In a moment, you'll hear Behind the Front Page with Gabriel Heater. Eastern Airlines now ready for departure. Dependable airliners, dependable pilots. That's double dependability. Eastern Airlines dependability. Fly Eastern, tried and proven over hundreds of millions of passenger miles. The present temperature, 81 degrees. The Bamberger Broadcasting Service, this is WOR, New York.